where we start. Um, first of all, thanks you for the invitation. And before we start, we want to introduce ourselves. Yeah, there we are. Um, my, name, my name is Benedikt Suska. I'm seven years old um, and came from Wuppertal in Germany. I'm a student in the 11th grade, and since spring this year, I'm a member of Techits EV. My free time, I to work on my home automation. Or before Corona came, um, I like to work on projects in hackerspaces with friends. And yeah, I like to uh, make music, playing the guitar or the piano. And my name is Kirill Schmidt. I'm also from Germany and a regular regular visitor of a hackerspace in the city I live in. My journey with Free Software began earlier this year when I also joined the Techis organization, which Dominic will elaborate on in another slide. And I am an audio and lights technician at school and the project leader of Schulfrei, which we will talk about later. And last but not least, I'm Dominic George, as it's uh, pronounced in, 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 in Germany, or George for convenience. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 old, I'm older than the average speaker here. And uh, as the, the title of uh, this presentation suggests, uh, this is about doing digital freedom um, together with youth and education. Um, I'm founder of Techits EV, with, uh, which is a German nonprofit that uh, copes with everything uh, around um, around free software uh, in combination with children, ad adolescents, and and education. I have been a FOSS enthusiast and uh, a con contributor to a lot of projects for more than a decade now, and. Um, getting young people and uh, students of mine into um, into free software always was uh, at the at, at the heart of the projects I did. In my in my day job, I'm a systems and database administrator at Creative, um, the John brand branch of of Creative, uh, an open source com consulting company, and uh, a Python and uh, and Django developer. Um, a few words uh, about the, the organization that runs the project we are presenting here. It's uh, as I said, it's called it's called Tickets, and it's probably the the only free software youth organ organization, at least the only one we heard of since we started uh, our work eight years ago. Um, based in Germany and uh, working internationally. Our goal is to set up a free software community for children and adolescents, or in other words, to ensure that young people can become part of the free software community. Um, we are also hosting technical stuff, technical solutions for education organizations like Moodle, Big Blue Button, Jitsi, um, and uh, and contributing to educational free software. So. Uh, this is this all comes together in our organization: the uh, the free software projects, the children, the ad adolescents, the schools, and um, also the the technical support or the dispatching of technical support uh, to um, to companies. Um, Schulfrei is a is a pun. It's uh, from the German words for school and free. So there's uh, education and free software in in it, and it uh, literally translates to to off school. Um, and we want to bring free and open source uh, digitization to to education organizations um, by selecting high quality educational free software and uh, delivering it to schools, um, getting sc schools, teachers, developers, and consulting companies to work together on this uh, central goal of promoting free software in in education and for schools. Okay, then I'm going to explain why schools uh, should use free software in education. Um, first of all, schools are independent uh, from single suppliers, uh, often 
big tech, tech companies um, like Google or Apple. And yeah, schools which use uh, free software um, are free in deciding uh, how they how they use the software. There are no unnecessary restrictions or hidden costs. Everything is clearly to see. And yeah, free software is sustainable. Um, there's a long term support. Um, it's in uh, proprietary software. It's not guaranteed. And you can use all the hardware. You don't have to buy every five years new uh, new hardware to run the, um, the newest software. And schools can um, adapt the software to their uh, to the school. Um, they can set it up how they how they like it. And uh, there's no commercialization of um, of schools. Young people as users and contributors. Um, young people have always to do with something as, uh, with the software. Um, for example, in education, it's an important use case of many software packages. Um, the youth uh, has to work frequently, frequently with Office, Office software, or um, or a web. Uh, Web software, um, but also in the free time, they yeah, always have to do something with the uh, software, um, like gaming. Um, but they are frequently um, have something to do with software, and that's why young people can be uh, also should be contributors uh, to free software because they have an other point of view um, and. This point of view can be integrated in the development of the software uh, that we use. Yeah, um, as I already um, said, uh, young people have always to do something with um, software, so they it's just logical to include them into the development. And yeah, all users should be considered as contributors. And every contributor counts. Um, every everybody can uh, can get into into development and have and can help, um, even if he's just uh, asking uh, for uh, for questions of understanding. Um, these contributors are are important. And yeah, everybody, um, if a if um, project wants to be successful um, and learn something from contributors, they must also, um, uh, new, new contributors must learn something. Uh, children uh, can start to learn uh, to contribute to software and um, yeah, everybody um, must, integrate into the development. Um, but there's a problem. Young users are um, marginalized, marginalized uh, minority in the first world. And yeah. Um, problem is they are often unnecessary and imposed. Um, yeah, young people face restrictions compared to adults. Uh, they are often unnecessary and imposed due to commercial interests of platforms. And yeah, we want to present the negative examples of, of software, which, um, which make it hard for our young people to use them. Okay, so there are some, um, some examples of where uh, young people face restrictions that w many, uh, many adult developers or um, uh, software maintainers do not realize on first glance, um, starting with, uh, um, with the most widespread software platforms used in open source development like uh, GitHub or the, the central 
demo or a central development platform of, uh, of, of GitLab at gitlab.com, um, both of which contain in the terms of use that any contributor must be, in the case of GitHub, uh, at least 13 years old. And by the other terms, they carry in their terms of service. This uh, will even be raised to 16 years of age, which on first glance doesn't sound too important because if the, the uh, if a developer who chooses a, a development platform for their open source project, they read this and they think, ah, yes, we are all th uh, older than 13 years. Why, why should I care? Um, what we regularly see in, in workshops with children at TechEds is that there are many, many small, on the first glance, very small things that happen. For example, when we do robotics workshops or um, mechatronics workshops um, and we use some tool like, uh, for example, the, the Tony Python editor, it's a, it's a, a small Python IDE uh, somewhat tailored at education. And uh, we actually had 11 or 12 year old children um, face some, some issues with this, with this IDE or just some rough edges. And um, they sat there and they had been learning Python for, uh, for a few days. And actually, um, at some point, uh, they said, hey, I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to remove this rough edge. I want to improve this software or can it be improved? And um, then we actually sit down with uh, with these children and say, hey, let's check whether uh, we can already understand a part of the code, if we can help you to understand this code. Um, and then you can, with our help, make a small patch. And even if this is only a fix of a typo or uh, or a diff of, of, of two lines or something, we believe that this is a valuable uh, contribution and it, is the, and it is a stepping stone that allows young people Uh, independent of their age, to um, to somehow land in the uh, in the free software world, which um, which strives with the availability of uh, of contributors. Um, also for um, for conferences and discussion platforms, um, I think two of the most widespread examples are Slack and Zoom. They also have this issue. Slack. Um, Slack goes a step further and they say we do not put an age restriction. Oh, yes, we put an age restriction here. Um, and this age restriction is at least 16 years old. But to use Slack and not um, um, and not break the terms of service, you um, have to do software development as your day job. If you do not have a, if, if you do not get your get your income. Out of um, out of out of what you do on Slack, then you are not allowed to use this platform. If you are a student, you are not allowed to use this platform, at least in the standard terms of service that are imposed on the average user of Slack. Um, which does not help because once you are once you are paid for software development, you um, you are already you already got farther than uh, than than being a total than, than being a total beginner and doing your first steps in free software um okay and i think uh, i do not have to elaborate on zoom uh, or else we wouldn't be here today <laughs> um yeah uh, children and young people are just one example of such groups uh, but we uh, somewhat represent this this group um And the most important about this uh, this group is that they cannot even legally defend themselves. They always need uh, some adult person, be it uh, their parents or a teacher or uh, some other uh, person they work together with in a, uh, in some work workshop situation or something um, to defend them and to help them uh, be recognized as a as a valuable contributor. Um, today I found one sentence. Um, this is. Uh, Uh, there are no hard feelings here. I just found this by accident. Uh, it says our events are for adults aged 16 years and over. Um, anyone who guesses where I took this sentence from um, gets a point here. Um, so what... Um, What can uh, what can projects do to or what can everyone here do to um, 
to help young people, young to help youngsters, um, to contribute to force or to help people who who work in education to um, to contribute to free software. Um, first of all, projects, conferences, hackathons uh, can strive to use um, to use open platforms and to adapt an open and minor friendly development process and. Um, Uh, just just include young people um, in, in in what they do, and maybe even do this explicitly in their code of con conduct. Um, code of conduct are there to help um, minorities to um, to not be marginalized, and I think young people are an important part of these these groups, and they should be recognized as such. Um, also, when selecting development or conference platforms. Um, Just, um, it is important to scrutinize these terms of use and uh, read what, what what kind of people are excluded by these terms of service. This already starts with people who are maybe somewhat more privacy aware than uh, than others. They are often excluded um, because they make a, a more or less free decision to say, "I do not want to use this platform," uh, or "I cannot use it," or "I would um, I would somewhat compromise my." Um, my my own rules I I imposed on what I accept for um, for my privacy and whatnot, but it goes down to people who just cannot simply legally decide that they want to accept it. Um, every community member, be it a developer or be it just someone who regularly visits a, a user group of some kind or something, um, can raise awareness um, for. Um, For free software as a learning opportunity, just um, in a situation where it uh, comes to mind, just uh, remind people that, um, that that free software comes from education. Free software was invented in universities, and um, um, the the BSD system, at least, it was invented. It was developed at a university. It was in uh, the 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 Minix kernel, which is now used by by Intel a lot. It was uh, invented as a learning project. This was a student learning project by Andrew Tannenbaum. So free software and education is linked together, um, has, has always been linked together from its very roots. And it is very important to raise this awareness and remind people that free software is at its very core about learning. Um, now to raise awareness what, for what this means, that young users and contributors um, uh, can be part of the FOSS community so that everyone who learns independent of their um, their bi biological attributes. Um, we talk a lot about uh, a lot about gender, but um, other biological attributes also do not do not really matter. So age also is an attribute that should not matter when re uh, recognizing someone as a learner who wants to start uh, contributing in a project or in a community. Also, actively encouraging young people. If uh, Someone visits your Unix Unix user group or some uh, some kind um, some kind of meetup like that, together with their um, with their adolescent uh, adolescent child or something. Maybe just develop a feeling for whether you can maybe uh, show them something you do as a contribution. Maybe find out whether they are interested. Um, okay. Um, teachers, of course. Um, can integrate development of, of software that is used in their school um, in their lessons. Uh, they can just, we will uh, continue with that a bit, uh, a bit later, they can um, look whether a contribution to some software that their school uses, some free software, uh, can be done in a, in a, in a course setup. And uh, also universities uh, can, can serve as multipliers, um, people working in universities to, to teach IT, um, IT topics to, to students um, should have um, should keep in mind that um, that that there is this community aspect of free software and not only teach technical stuff but also somewhat slightly push the students in the direction where they um, where they recognize um, being a community as an important part of uh, of today's IT world. Now I am going to talk about the use of free open source software in education. So the difficulties of FOSS in education 
are the large diversity in FOSS projects. Because these projects are mostly voluntary work, they greatly differ in quality, documentation and stage of development. It can become very hard to identify projects that are high quality and fit one's needs. Another problem are support channels. If problems arise, one has to hope that developers are eager to help and it's not always apparent how one can or should contact their developers. A, a problem that also could arise is integration with other software. If a school, for example, uses many FOSS solutions for different tasks, a teacher might have to log into 10 different accounts for six websites because some solutions do not integrate themselves which, with other projects easily. This is a of course, an over-exaggeration, but demonstrates the problem pretty well, in my opinion. I already mentioned that there is a lot of diversity in FOSS projects. I have to point out, however, that diversity is very important for the FOSS community as a whole. As a whole, By not setting any limits, new projects can arise with great and interesting approaches, even though the overwhelming amount of software can be confusing for decision makers or quote-unquote customers at first. Well, there are two contradicting points of view on software. Keep in mind, though, that these are also exaggerated in order to clarify the problem. On the one hand, the foreseen values the already mentioned diversity and freedom of choice. That means being in control over software and knowing what software does in the background and changing or replacing that software if one has found a better alternative. Everyone hel helping everyone means that there are no set boundaries like customer and contributor. Everyone can contribute to projects by sending bug reports, requesting features, or taking part in developing the software, like Benedict already mentioned. The last point on the first side is that commercial is evil. Many free software developers don't want their software to be commercialized because they fear that profit could become a higher priority than meeting the project's goals or acting against the community's interests by limiting who can use the software. The decision, decision makers in education, on the other hand, want to buy a product that looks professional, has clear features, a price tag, and reliable support. They don't care as much or at all about the freedom or choice or diversity because they want to put off responsibility. And the Schulfrei project aims to provide the glue or bridge between these interests. Our approach is curating, that means naming the field of endeavor in schools. Software in schools is used for school administration, communication and or educational software for working with students in classes. Other criteria for software would be the size of the project and how many contributors it has. This ensures longevity of projects and continued support. We link components, so the example of the teacher mentioned before with 10 accounts, or six solutions does not happen with single sign-on, for example, or exchange of data. We hold presentations like this one and attend to conference for our own booth, like this year at FOSTEM, which uh, is a free software conference, and we also have our own website where our solutions are presented. And we work on offering technology with agreed upon standards which means setting up standards with support companies, so the Schulfrei stack is the same everywhere. This is currently a work in progress, just as creating a network of support companies. Examples of support companies that work with us currently are Kreativ and Tarent, and both companies are in Germany. To, to spend a few minutes on the uh, on the technical ex aspect of this uh, Schulfrei project, as already mentioned, um, the Schulfrei project is about selecting and curating free software components um, that are then offered to schools to to overcome this this issue that decision makers and teachers often um, need help to navigate the the vast amount of. Um, of solutions that exist in, in free software for whatever they want to do at their school. Um, this uh, is not, I think it's not, not complete anymore, this, uh, this picture. Um, but um, 
in the in the full stack that we uh, that we envision that we see the Debian Edu uh, system at the core of uh, of the Schulfrei stack, um, and uh, around that uh, we have by now selected uh, the next cloud uh, file sharing and groupware uh, platform, um, the Moodle learning management system, um, the Big Blue Button video conferencing system, and um, and the Alexa School information system. Um, and the idea is that uh, the Schulfrei project not only selects these uh, these software components um, by their um, by their quality and by their by, by their fitness for the uh, the field of endeavor that we we want to we want to promote them for, but we also ensure that they integrate really tight. So um, even though we uh, follow the KISS principle that um, that every component should be should do one thing. And um, and do that and 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 be good at that. Um, we still um, provide a system that that feels uh, like um, like a mach like a machine with uh, with with some gears that work very well together. Um, I want to uh, elabor uh, elaborate shortly on, um, on 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 the two main components, which is the Debian Edu system. Um, Debian Edu is, uh, as the name suggests, something to do with the Debian uh, GNU Linux distri distribution, and it's uh, actually a pure blend. So uh, this is a um, a part of the Debian distribution, not something that was forked from it or something that uh, is that is uh, somehow layered and distributed on top of it. But it is a core part of the distribution, providing a full featured solution for school networks like uh, servers and clients. Um, uh, at the server side, we get uh, user management, uh, an LDAP and Kerberos authentication, basic network services like uh, log on and file sharing and backups um, and uh, printing and stuff like that. Um, Wi-Fi authentication, all uh, that basic network stuff. And it ships a, a pre-configured LTSP, Linux Terminal Server Project, environment um, that allows after installing the the, the central the central server um, to um, either boot uh, all the machines in a in a computer lab or laptops or something um, from the server and get um, and get the workstations up and running without any installation or to install the the, the client version of Debian edu over the network so it is completely self-managed and does not need any uh, any kind of maintenance to get uh, images rolled out or, uh, or or anything like that. Uh, the desktop ships uh, a default Debian desktop based on XFCE um, and some pre-selected apps for student and and teacher workstations. Uh, they are categorized by um, by subjects um, like um, like chemistry, mathematics, and um, and all that. Or by uh, they can also be grouped by um, by by the by the age of the of, of the children or the or the classes that exist at the at the school. So uh, this um, this is the the unique. The, these are the two unique points about it. One that it is really part of the Debian distribution, and uh, that it not only not only ships uh, a server but also a full featured environment for all the computers the uh, the students and teachers work with. The second part is uh, Alexis, which uh, I might want to call the flagship project of uh, of Schulfrei. Um, it's a school information system uh, that uh, helps manage all kinds of information and data that um, that is worked with in in a school, like um, the person, the students, teachers, parents that uh, exist at the school. Um, the groups, the the classes, the courses, maybe uh, maybe afternoon clubs, stuff like that. Timetables, substitution plans, room plans, um, all these classical uh, types of data that exist in the uh, in schools. Um, also, a digital uh, class register um, that focuses um, both on pro uh, both on data protection and transparency, so students can decide whether they want. Um, the students uh, to be able to see what notes teachers took about uh, that, uh, about them to see their own notes that were taken uh, concerning them how many uh, lesson in how many lessons they were absent this can all be con configured um, 
This software was uh, developed from its core um, by by people in the by people in the Schulfrei project together with students. Um, there are uh, four students from uh, from a school in northern Germany in uh, in Lübeck who um, started such a school information system at their school, and uh, in the in the same time we started such a project at Tickets um, or at Schulfrei, in the Schulfrei project. And um, after some 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 months, we uh, we we learned about each other, and then the projects were merged. So it is now an example project how students and teachers and professional software de developers work together. Uh, we have um, two week sprints. We have a sprint planning and a review on uh, every second Friday, and we do um, a modified version of um, of of the Scrum model. Um, in this combination of developers and teachers and students to deliver this software um, to their school and to and to other schools as as well, starting from from next term. Ah, yeah, and uh, this is um, to make that clear. This is all also um, one of the development goals. We want to deliver high quality software that can actually be used in public schools without concerns. Um, but we want it to serve as a textbook example. So um, we want to enable um, computer science classes to take this software and say we want an app to, uh, let's say, organize some, um, some, some sports event at, at our school or something. And we want to write an app for this. And this is used in, in real life. So they can actually take this opportunity to, um, to, uh, to improve their computer science classes. And this is, uh, we have this development goal um, that the software can at every point in time serve as a textbook example to learn how to do software development and web development with Python and, and Django. So, how can you help? As already mentioned, youth is a minority. So, when you see adolescents that uh, show interest, uh, Help them, promote them, and maybe show them our uh, association. And this uh, goes hand, hand in hand with, our, with the phrase, help you, help us. We at Tickets also struggle sometimes with identifying and encouraging young people. And by supporting them, you support associations like us that work with adolescents. So word of mouth is also very powerful. Um, you can contribute to our website and improve our text to make contributions, you don't have to be a member of the Tickets Association. We have open chat rooms and the links to that will be in the next slide. You can also help us with administration, Ansible roles, roles test deployments. We have open, we have a, our own GitLab instance called EduGit, where we host our, our projects. You can also become a service provider a dedicated Schulfrei consulting company. As I already mentioned, we are we are trying to create a network of those companies, and you can also sponsor us. We have uh, several sponsor packets for companies, or donate us via PayPal or Libra Pay. Okay. Um. Let me uh, let me, let me jump in here quickly because there was an important uh, discussion in the chat I I followed while uh, you were speaking. Um, can you uh, go back one slide? Um, uh, the discussion just uh, uh, just revolved around the question uh, how to protect children once you get them into their project, this, which is actually a very important question. And um, uh, one of uh, the points that most projects will have the most difficulties with because uh, they might not have the... Um, might not have the resources to uh, to do it properly. They might not have the experience to do it properly. Um, that's why we offer everything we do also to others. Um, uh, be it technical, as um, as Kira said, uh, we run the EduGit um, hosting uh, source code hosting platform. Uh, we do not only use this for our projects, but we also offer this um, to other software projects and to schools and to computer science classes uh, who want to use and, and, and teach Git and, and uh, collaborative software development, but also the non-technical parts, the experience we, 
we gathered in uh, in working together with young people and uh, the legal questions. We have extensive legal materials and um, um, at least uh, concerning the German law, um, um, informational uh, informational papers and uh, and uh, consent forms for everyone involved um, that also make this uh, make this legally clear. And uh, we offer all of this experience and all these non-technical stuffs to others who uh, who ask and to want to who, who want to um, who want to help young people in free software as a whole. So there's uh, support by us and hopefully by other projects and other user groups um, in the future who uh, who also um, volunteer to to get involved in um, in helping with these topics. You can uh, skip to the next slide, Benny. Yeah, this is the way how you contact us. That was our talk. We are, uh, as I already mentioned, these are open chat groups. You don't have to be a member of the Tickets Association. And we are relatively active there. Our mat metrics chat room is our primary check client, but we have also bridges to IRC and X XMPP. So uh, to conclude, maybe as a as a first stepping stone uh, to help us, maybe someone can uh, submit a contribution to fix these hyperlinks there and find out why Pandoc doesn't convert them. Oh, I think it doesn't convert them because I actually put LaTeX in Markdown. So um, forget that. <laughs> okay. So I think this uh, was the last slide and. Um, I think our time has run out. Um, this regularly happens for us, uh, sadly. We're sorry. Um, do we still uh, do questions now or do we uh, do that after all the presentations? Yeah, I think you, not can answer, you know, one or two questions is not a problem. So I think you addressed already the questions that were in the, in the chat. Okay. okay. Um, where does it start? Uh, okay, uh, concerning the uh, the age restrictions, uh, I don't think this is a question. Uh, let me just quickly go over these. Uh, oh, yeah. In the bottom, Andy actually had a good question. So what cultural issues have been found? For example, teachers and decision makers wanting to go with Microsoft because it's what they know and they have contracts in place. Um, yeah, first of all, they don't have contracts in place. Most of the time, they only believe they have contracts in place. Um, an important first step uh, is to um, to make clear to them and show them that they actually don't because they forgot uh, um, the some important parts to make it uh, GDPR compliant. Um, also for uh, for the use by um, by children, which are often forgotten, they just do the standard GDPR uh, compliance check uh, that is used for uh, for any public office and uh, also for the for for the school management. And uh, then they find out that uh, there are other rules and other laws concerning children, and uh, this is often first comes, often comes as a surprise. Um, the other aspect is uh, from our experience in working with schools. Um, there are some um, some rules in communication. Uh, for example, when you uh, when when we get into into a school as um, let's call it consultants, we want to help teachers or, uh, or the headmastership um, to find technical solutions for their school. And uh, some, some teacher or some parent says, hey, there's this organization. They do this with free software. Let's invite them. Let, let, uh, let us listen to them. Um, it is very important to not ask anybody um, what software do you want to use or what software do you want to have because everyone will say Apple and Microsoft. Um, the way we learned uh, to do it is uh, to ask, what uh, do you want the technology to um, to help you with? What do you want it to do for you? And then we show them that the solutions we have actually solve this issue. And most of the time, this uh, this turns out pretty well because they um, find that all their all their questions, all their desires have been uh, have been responded to, um, and they are very open to try it out then.
So I have another question for you. So um, which schools actually would you say you have, you know, good contacts and are actually using it? Western um, set of schools or? Yes, we uh, we know about uh, many schools that use it, that use part of the stack. Um, we um, actually started to put this together in a uh, in a co coordinated curating effort under this uh, under this uh, Schulfrei name for this complete software stack um, only recently. Um, we obviously, uh, starting in uh, starting in February or March this year, uh, the demand for the uh, the conferencing and learning management part of the stack uh, started to grow. Um, we got involved in a lot of uh, in a lot of Twitter discussions um, and um, uh, the numbers of schools that uh, wanted this part of the stack to not use uh, Zoom and Microsoft Teams um, actually grew quite rapidly. Um, and uh, for the Debian Edu um, solution, there are it. Um, we, we we know of uh, we know about at least ten schools in um, in the in the state of Schleswig-Holstein in the north of Germany um, who uh, who use it um, as their as their as their only system. And here in our area, uh, we are working with um, we are preparing two schools to become um, official demo schools or, or pilot schools that um, do not only want to use a free software stack, but uh, want to present themselves as uh, as a model for as, as a model for others. These are things we are currently actively working on, um, in parallel with the topic of uh, getting. Um, consultant companies involved, so every school can also get uh, professional support for their uh, for for the stack. 